Welcome to Chopstick Travel. We're Luke and Sabrina, and today is day five here in the north of Pakistan. And in today's episode, we're at the beautiful Serena Kaplu Palace. This is an ancient palace that has been converted into an amazing hotel. We're going to be showing you around the area, tasting all the delicious food here at the Serena Kaplu Palace, learning about the history of this place. It's going to be a great episode, so make sure you stay tuned until the end. Let's go get some breakfast. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So there are tons of beautiful seating areas around the Kaplu Palace and this morning for breakfast we were sitting on one of their balconies. It's all wood open to the outside and seating on the floor. It's beautiful and then you've got an incredible view of the palace behind me and then mountains in the distance. We're just waiting for the breakfast to arrive. What a beautiful setting for breakfast and we have some incredible food. So the main dish we have here is a local buckwheat pancake called kasir. That's this on the bottom here. And then on top of it, it's been served with a uh, omelet with some cheese. Looks like there's a little, I think that's a sausage, um, tomato, some sauce, and then there's a little hash brown over here. And that looks like an apricot jam. And then we've got a plate of local fruit, uh, apples from their garden, apricots, and then these are little tiny apples apparently. I've never tried one that small before. And then apple juice, which of course also fully organic from their garden. Everything here looks incredible and the setting is just as beautiful. So let's dig in. Okay, so let me go in with a little bit of the omelet and some of this kassir, the buckwheat pancake, which is a local uh, bulti style dish. And I'm guessing that's gonna be apricot oil on it too. Let's try. So that buckwheat pancake, it's really thick, it's dense. There's some like crunchy pieces of the buckwheat in there and then served with a nice cheesy uh, fluffy omelet on top. But I think that was actually honey and it tasted really good with a little bit of sweetness. So let me put a little bit of this apricot jam on there with it and just try the kassir by itself. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's like a thick pancake. And that jam is just so good. A little bit sour, yum. Okay, I'm really interested in trying out one of these little tiny apples here. I've never seen ones quite this small. Mmm. Ooh, they're sour. Oh, they're very sour. But yeah, the texture is the exact same as a regular apple. Mmm, look at that, that's really unique. Okay, so we've also been served some carrot juice. I'm assuming the carrots are all organic and local. And yep, it smells exactly like a carrot. It's got this kind of odd pink color. Let's give it a try. It's really healthy. Ooh, that's pulpy. I'm pretty sure. Yep, there's a carrot chunk in there. That is just blended carrot. That's all I got to say. All you have to say? That's it. It's that's, just that's carrot. All. That's all. I think that was good enough. It's just pure carrot. Yeah. What about the umami? There's no umami. <laughs> that was an incredible breakfast and just finishing things off with a nice cup of coffee. The temperature here today is perfect and there is a lot to explore here at the Kaplu Palace. So we're gonna take a little tour around the property. Hey guys, today's video sponsor is Manta Sleep. So they have reinvented and made the world's best sleeping mask. And I'm gonna give you my honest review of this product. I've been sleeping with it for the last couple of weeks and I have noticed some serious changes in my life. My mood has been better. I've been getting incredible sleeps and it's so comfy. I was concerned about it kind of falling off or being uncomfortable when I'm laying down in bed because I sleep on my side, but it's actually all padded the whole way around. And then you get these little cups right here that are removable and you can change the size. I went with a large size and it's the perfect travel companion, especially for when you're on the plane. Having this thing on is literally 
as dark as it gets. It's like sensory deprivation and super comfy. I don't even know if I'm looking at the camera right now or not. You guys can get 10% off your Mantis Sleep sleeping mask with the coupon code Chopstick Travel. I highly recommend it. It's really changed the game. If you're sleeping in any kind of not ideal conditions, some light coming in, you work night shifts, uh, maybe you're just traveling on the bus and you want to get a couple hours of sleep, this thing is the way to go. Let's get back to the video. So we have an awesome tour guide from the Serena Hotel showing us around the beautiful Kaplu Palace. And this place has a really unique history. It actually used to be originally constructed on top of a mountain that you can see from the courtyard that we're standing in right now. You can see the little bits of foundation. So it was originally built up top on the mountain but then in 1840 they brought the pieces down to where it is now and that's because it was peaceful then uh, Islam was in the region and they decided they didn't need the safety of being on top of the mountain so they brought it down and reconstructed it here in 1840 and you can see all the intricate designs on the outside it's got all these wood carvings and then this white uh, facade it's absolutely beautiful we're gonna go inside and see what else it has to offer <laughs> One thing you'll notice inside the fort is that a lot of the doors are really small. They have three reasons for that. The first is for safety, the second is for the climate control, and the third is for respect, so you kind of bow when entering inside the palace. So besides just checking out the really intricate uh, architecture and design of the palace, it's also kind of a museum and there's some artifacts that have been left over from uh, the royal family, such as the queen's jewelry and some of their old clothing, like their shoes. Really, really cool to see. Wow. They would shut the doors and the guards would sleep on these doors. Oh, so no one would get out. So probably the coolest part of this entire palace is that it's actually a really nice hotel at the same time. So we just checked out the part that has been left original and now we're on the uh, upper floors where the rooms are. We'll show you our room later, but uh, it gets a lot more, not modern, but stylishly done, cleanly. This room is probably my favorite of all. It's for the guests at the hotel only, so that's another benefit of staying here, is you get to see more of the palace. There's this beautiful walnut wood door, and then we have this amazing view with these eight intricately carved windows, and then the ceiling is also carved and hand-painted. Views over the beautiful autumn colors, and there's nice seating on the ground. Okay, and the final part of the tour of the palace is the rooftop. I'm guessing there's going to be some incredible views up here. Oh yeah. So from the rooftop here you can see all kinds of these different mountain peaks and not far from here are a couple borders. So over these mountains here is Ladakh, the Indian border, and then over these mountains here is the Chinese border. And actually if you climb this mountain right over here, you'll get a view of uh, several mountains including K2, the second largest mountain in the world. So there are some serious giants around here and I love the autumn colors, you get all these 
these yellows, greens, uh, oranges, and wow, it's just stunning up here. That was a very comprehensive tour of the Kaplu Palace, really interesting. Now we are in the garden. It's absolutely gorgeous out here. There's flowers, apple trees, apricot trees. Uh, you get a view of the palace. And we're here to have lunch, so we ordered up some traditional Balti cuisine, the cuisine from Baltistan. And once we get all the food, I'll show you what we got. Uh, we stable soup and chebele. Chebele soup. So we're sitting down for lunch now and the first dish has just arrived. It's a local soup called uh, chebele and it's using millet and it looks like there's lots of fresh vegetables and herbs, probably most if not all from their garden. You can see the little millet in there. Yum. Oh, really light flavor. Doesn't taste like any of the other soups we've had in Pakistan. It actually tastes so home cooked and reminds me of like my grandmother's cooking. It's really simple, but delicious, hearty. Mm. Uh, local mantu. Ooh. Mantu means uh, local uh, dumpling. Yeah, local dumpling. Say so local mantu. Mantu means dumpling. So second course has arrived and check out the presentation here. This is mum too. So there's a dumpling underneath there. It's stuffed with chicken. It's been topped with uh, some garnishes and there's a sauce on the bottom and a lime right here. And he's told me that I should put a little bit of lime on there. And this is obviously a fancy version of what is a very local dish in this region. So let me, oh, lost all my toppings, but oh man, that looks super, super juicy. Oh, my mouth is watering. Let's try. Mm. Mm. That is so, so, so good. The sauce is where most of the flavor is coming from. It's got a hit of spice. I think it's like a thick, dark soy sauce, and then definitely quite a bit of vinegar in there. You can taste that sour, acidic flavor. And the dumpling itself is super juicy. Nice wrapper on the outside. Oh, that's awesome. Just one big, beautiful, plump dumpling. Mm. Mm -hmm. So our next dish is a local salad called 4-4 salad. And it's actually using like some kind of a pasta you can see right here. And then there's a lemon and apricot oil dressing. It's really interesting, like a pasta salad. I haven't had that in Pakistan before. Mm. Mm. It's just a refreshing light salad. Again, it reminds me of like my grandmother's cooking, like almost like a Canadian uh, pasta salad not much different. So check out this really interesting looking dish. It's called Mrazan and it's a buckwheat that has been boiled in water. This is the buckwheat here and then this is a local butter on the inside and then on the outside is apricot oil you can see. So I guess what you could do is just go in with your fingers, uh, grab a little bit. Oh it's like play-doh consistency and then you can decide to dip in the apricot oil but I'm gonna go with a little bit of the local butter. Mmm. Mm. Wow, that's awesome. The butter tastes so good. It's like a mild butter flavor. It's not really strong. And it's got a really creamy consistency. And then there's some onions in there as well. So you can taste that. Let's go in for another little scoop. And I'm going to try some of that apricot oil on the outside, which is one of my favorite ingredients we keep eating here. Mmm. Yeah. It's a little nutty. A little fruity. Yum. Wow. So what is in this one? Mutton? Mutton apsha. Mutton apsha. Yes. Okay. So this next dish is called apsha. There is chunks of mutton in here. There is chilies. Um, it's in a very thin, it's like a soup. It's not really a gravy. And I'm just going to take this piece and put it on my plate. And it's also got quite a lot of oil. And we've got, uh, this is a roti. So one thing you'll notice here in the north is that the flavors are much, much subtler than in the south. And the meat in this dish is really, really tender. And I wanna go in maybe just with my spoon and just try like some of this soup by itself without the chapati. Let's try it. Oh yeah, 
oh there's a ton of flavor in there yum that is really good it's really rich meaty broth yep okay we are having tons of dishes just doing a little taste test so the lovely folks here at the Serena are bringing us out tons of dishes to try. So the next one here is called Prapu and it's actually like a pasta apparently made with buckwheat and then it's covered in a walnut sauce. Oh yeah, that's like a super soft. Oh, I see it now. Okay. It's interesting. Let's try that. So the, the Prapu, the pasta is almost just like a dumpling without any filling. It's just a a thick buckwheat flour and then that creamy creamy sauce on top a little bit nutty and a little bit sweet you know that's actually amazing look at that big chunks of pasta mm. we are finished off with lunch and for dessert we have something called fudding butt and it is a boiled apricot mash and then it's been topped with uh, some crushed almonds and it looks like a little bit of cream on the side here let's try it out Ooh, so many apricots here Mmm. Mmm. It's a little sour, a little bit sweet. It's creamy, but you get the crunch from the almonds. The apricots here are so high quality. You can just taste them so pure and sour. I love it. Oh, that's really good. Mm. Finish off with our lunch and dessert. What a place to have it too. That is one of many different spots you can uh, dine and just chill here in Serena Kaplu Palace. Hey guys, welcome to our room, room 301 in the heart of the Kaplu Palace. So this room that we're staying in is really cool. It's got all this original uh, structural support, the walls, the ceilings, these beams, everything is original and the furniture is really quite stylish but in the old style. And we also have an ensuite bathroom. You come in. It's really quite nice. It's the same style, wood everywhere. There's a nice window. Everything is super cozy and we have been loving our stay here. So we're just chilling in our room here at the Serena Kaplu Palace and I want to let you guys know that if you are planning to come to Pakistan, you have to check out Manaki. They are the ultimate Pakistan travel resource, a one-stop shop for all your travel needs to Pakistan. They offer everything from tours to car rentals to stays here in Pakistan. So you gotta check out Manaki.com. Our trip would not have been possible without them and all the amazing things we have done have been because of them. So if you guys are thinking about coming to Pakistan and I really think think you should it is seriously one of the best travel destinations in the world especially the northern areas just beautiful check out Manaki it is a one-stop shop for all your Pakistan travel related needs we have been super cozy in our room here at the Serena Kaplu Palace and right now we're going to try one of their experiences that they offer here which is high tea so let's go find out where that is now so we found this little nook slash balcony off the side of the fort and this is where we are set up to have our high tea we have amazing views of all the mountains and the beautiful trees around and then of course we're like laying down on this mat and pillow looks quite comfortable mm. oh yum yeah that's nice it's light it's time time tea mm. That's really nice and light. This is the Zarchun. Gonna give this a try. It almost looks like it's fried. Let's give it a try. Mmm. Oh. Nice and warm. And sweet. Mmm. Okay. The outside layer is nice and crunchy, but the inside is super fluffy. It's very sweet, and it does remind me of a yotia. Next up is this walnut cake, and what you gotta do is just Give it a little dip in the honey. Ooh, that's nice and thick. Oh, that honey is outrageously good. It's super sweet. And that walnut cake has a really nice crunch to it. It's very thick. It's warm. Mm. 
All right, next up is the kassir. This is the local pancake, a little bit different than what we had for breakfast. And I'm just gonna go in classic, nothing on top. Mm. Mm. This is a savory one. Definitely. So it's uh, full of onions, some green herbs, and it's not very thick. Mm. It's so fluffy. It almost tastes like an omelet. <laughs> It's yeah. pretty good. And last but not least is the shakurba. And as you can see inside, it's filled with chicken. This is really similar to the chapshuro that we also had in Hunza. And you can go in with the raita or you can go in plain. I'm just gonna go in for the natural taste. Mmm. Mm. Yum. Wow. That chicken is spiced really nice. Tons of different spices and herbs in there. It's fried to perfection. It's a little oily. Yeah, for but sure. Another savory but from this high tea. It's delicious. It's delicious. That's it for our day here at the Kaplu Palace Serena Hotel. Incredible place, super unique, and uh, really fun to just explore and sleep here. Definitely gets a little spooky at nighttime, I will admit, <laughs> but it's a beautiful hotel. And that's gonna be it for the north. And I gotta ask you guys, what was the best thing that we ate here in the north of Pakistan. Should we go on one, two, three? Yes. One, okay. two, three. Mom, Dude, I'm two. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, oh yeah, okay. The That's, Mom, it's two tied. is good. It's yeah. tied. So we got deer ham pity, the, the fried dough soaked in all that almond oil. Oh, so amazing. Super good. And then Sabrina says the mom too, which is also amazing. Yeah. We just had today. Local dumpling. Yeah, I love that. Super juicy. and. A couple other shout outs, Lal Shazadi. Mm -hmm. yeah. Her chapshuro is incredible. Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. The the trout karahi and sauce. The trout yes. karahi, yeah. So yes. there's a lot of great food here, but if I'm being honest with you, you come here for the views and the experience because it's just so, so beautiful mm -hmm. here. If you guys haven't already, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you're notified. And I want to say a huge thank you to Manaki, the ultimate one-stop shop for your Pakistan travel needs. So make sure to check out all their information down in the description box, manaki.com. We'll see you guys on the next episode of Chopstick Travel. Bye. Bye.